So a lot of people look at certain things and may have positive or negative biases against that item. And I try to do the best I can to stay as neutral as possible. Sometimes I get my mind changed, sometimes I don't. We'll be talking about that in this video, coming up. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about something that I've already somewhat covered in a previous video at the beginning of the year, and I wanted to circle back to it because I finally have one of these in my hand. What are we talking about? We are talking about the Riley Defense Crink if you want to call it that. I know the purist out there will be like, no, it's not a crank, you can't call it that. But this is something that I was very interested in trying to get my hands on, uh, taking it out to the range, testing it and all of that type of stuff so that I could give you guys an idea on whether or not something like this is going to be right for you. Now, you guys know how I do things. I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad or indifferent. This was sent to me by Riley Defense, and I'm just putting rounds through in it, giving you my thoughts on it, the good, the bad, the ugly, and let you guys decide whether or not this is something right for you. So my question to you guys is, what do you think about Riley Defense? Do you think that this is something that uh, had a bit of a rough start and maybe they're turning things around? Do you think that they're just still garbage? Do you think that they are going to end up being a good American AK? Let me know down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear about that. If you haven't already subscribed, I appreciate you guys considering doing so. Likes, shares, comments, all of that type of stuff is a great way to help the channel as well. And if you haven't already checked out the Live Laugh LARP podcast, I'd encourage you guys to do so. Link to all of that is down in the description below and I'd enjoy you guys swinging by and checking things out. All right, so let's get back into the Riley Defense crink, if you want to call it that. What else can I say about it that Clay hasn't already talked about that in his unboxing video? Uh, not too much, <laughs> to be frankly honest with you. He is way smarter at this type of stuff than I am. Uh, he's been in it a number of years more than I have. If you haven't already seen his unboxing video, I'll leave a link to it right here. Check that out. Um, I'll leave a card at the end of the video as well. So if you guys want to check that out, you can. So, but essentially it is going to be a short barreled 762 by 39. Um, you can call it a crank, I guess, but realistically it's probably going to be more of like a Draco. Um, it's probably the best way to say it. It does have a hinged back plate right here that will allow you to knock out the 4.5 millimeter pin and then replace it with something that will allow you to add like a triangle stock if you want to form one it or maybe a brace or something to that effect. All right, so let's talk about a quick overview of this. Uh, up front, we have a four piece cone flash hider brake, whatever you want to call it, uh, which is going to be very similar to that of the arsenals. And then moving back from here, they have kind of a crank off style handguard situation up here, very nice texture. And what I can tell you is as I was putting the 685 rounds through it in the very first trip, uh, range trip, these never got so hot that I couldn't grip them with my bare hands. That was something I really did like. Now the retainer, the handguard retainer up here, it sure did get hot, but the handguards themselves, no problem whatsoever. Has a nice smooth bottom to it for you to get a nice good grip around it and it's, it's comfortable, right? Moving back uh, on this, you have the hinged dust cover. As you would expect, a crank off. It does have a spring retention to it. And the cool thing that I liked about what Riley Defense did is on this rear sight is they've made it to where you can order this piece individually so that you could put your own dust cover on it should you want to do that. Or if you wanted to switch things out, you can have all of the ability uh, or flexibility rather that you would want in something like this. So there is that. Um, moving back on the receiver, you do have a optics mount ready to go. Obviously, this is something that you would wanna have in place of just standard iron sights, and there's no way to mount an iron sight here unless you swapped out the top handguard for some type of rail system. 
Here you have a very Krebs custom style safety uh, that has the ledge on it. Uh, it is pretty tight. I haven't messed with it at all. I haven't tuned it at all. So there is that. One of the great things that I did like about this though is the trigger on this is very, very nice. So there you go. Standard rolling brake, but it, it seems as if it is um, far better than what you would find on a Romanian Wasser or anything like that. It just seems like it's been uh, a little bit more refined than some of the other ones. This is going to be Riley Defense's proprietary pistol grip. Uh, it will accept any other types of pistol grip that you would want to put on here, but this is a little bit of a flatter angle and uh, has some nice texturing on it. So. All right, so let's talk about magazine compatibility. Right now I've got a Tula Bakelite in here and it locks in really, really easily. If we move on over to the truck bed, here is a Gen 2 Magpul and it fits in, no problems, real snug, not too much wiggle or wobble to it at all. So that's nice. This is a uh, KCI mag. Uh, I like to run these, they're inexpensive and they're durable. I did have these, uh, I did have a little bit of a problem with these um, when I was shooting it the last time I was out here. Really, really tight lockup. This one's not too bad. For some reason, this one fits real well, no problem. If I could get that in there, there we go. Fits in pretty good, no problem. The other one's really, really tight. I had to basically hold Hold the crank here and wrench in. You'll see that in some of the B-roll. Here is an aftermarket waffle. I'm not sure where this came from. I don't know what manufacturer this is, but uh, this one fits no problem. A little tighter getting over that magazine retention or retainer. And you can see it kind of hangs up a little bit. So. If you have some of these, again, I don't remember where this came from. We also have one of the uh, Gun Mag Warehouse um, Bulgarian Polymer Steel Reinforced Magazines. This one is pretty tight as well, but it does latch in no problem. No wiggle at all, so that's nice. And then finally, my prize and joy, this is one of the Ukrainian battlefield pickup window bakes and ah, that one fits in no problem if I can actually do it right so um, so pretty good what I did find is some of the KCI mags that I had testing this was uh, really 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 tight I, I don't understand why that was but it may have been that it's just kind of worked itself loose a little bit all right, so what has been my experience shooting this? Uh, well, the first time I came out to shoot, uh, I did have the camera at a 45 degree angle off my right side. Uh, it did get hit with a lot of the blasts from this muzzle device. So it is pretty shaky to see, but I had a lot of fun. My intention was to come out to the range and put 300 rounds through this, and I couldn't stop after 300 rounds. I just had to keep on going. So I went from 300 to 500, and then finally 685 rounds. Surprisingly enough, I had exactly 685 rounds with me at the time. So shot it, had a lot of fun, ran it really, really hard, and, um, it was a lot of fun. I just, there's nothing else that I can really say about it. Anytime you're out at the range, it's a good time to uh, just enjoy yourself while you're there. Now, I did have a few failures to ejects, uh, failures to extract, but I think that had a lot to do with user error than the firearm itself. There was a, a few that I was, uh, going super fast with, if you know what I mean. And I may have been uh, hitting this safety lever, causing it to malfunction on its own. But out of the 685, I think there may have been like five rounds that had some type of issue, two of which were a click, no bang, fed them back in, they ran just fine. So um, I don't have any major issues with this whatsoever. 
uh, in comparison to some of the other ones that are out here. Now, what can we say as far as other good attributes to this? Number one, this is gonna get you as close as you possibly can to an actual imported crank off without spending two and a half, three thousand dollars uh, to have one either pulled together from a parts kit or buy one straight out like a Arsenal 104 UR or something like that. This is going to get you pretty close and it's gonna come in somewhere around that $1,100, $1,200 or less. So that's number one. Number two is this is going to have a lot of uh, compatibility with some of the aftermarket products that are already on the market currently in comparison to say like a uh, Zustava M92 where you have to look for Yugo specific parts. So there's another aspect of it as well. The other thing that I will say that I really liked about this is that um, for an American AK manufacturer like Riley Defense is, they're not using cast components for the trunnions, the bolts, and the carriers. That's something I really was impressed with. When I talked to Ramsey at SHOT Show this previous January, so very happy to see that they are getting the forgings sent into them and then they turn them down in shop. So that's something I really did like as well. All right, so let's talk about some of the not so good things uh, about this. Number one is obviously this is going to be in a pistol configuration. So with all of the shenanigans going on with the AFT and everything else, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to give you legal advice, but you do what your paycheck can allow you to do, right? So um, I would highly suggest looking into getting a Form 1 and putting a triangle stock on here. It does have the latch on the uh, left side for you to lock that folding triangle stock in place. Uh, or you could look into doing a pistol setup as well. So just keep those types of things in mind. Uh, the next thing is this is a short barreled pistol as it's set up right now. So just be mindful that uh, this is going to have a lot of concussion for you to shoot this at a you know outdoor range your friends next to you may not appreciate it very much because this is going to have a lot of blast even with uh, this muzzle device on here as it is we'll see if these feed okay the next thing is riley defense unfortunately does have a little bit of a blight on their reputation as far as what is going on with their um, quality control. There has been a lot of complaints about them in the past. I don't have any experience with them from previous iterations of their products, but I was impressed with Ramsey's passion. So I wanted to make sure that after I talked to him at SHOT Show, I wanted to see about getting one of these in my hands and testing them out. So there is that. All right, so let's talk about the ugly. And uh, this is something that I am not overly excited to talk about. Um, naturally, I'm pulling for Riley Defense. I'm pulling for any AK manufacturer to do good. And uh, we are seeing some premature wear on the bolt, which initially I had some concerns with. I'll show you some video right here of what it looked like. As soon as I got it, I pulled the bolt and carrier and got video of the lugs and the carrier tail so you can get a before. And then I switched over and after 300 rounds, I looked at the carrier again and uh, noticed no significant peening on the carrier tail, but the bolt was showing some signs of peening on the lugs. That was at 300 rounds. I went ahead and ran the remaining 385 rounds through it and pulled the bolt and carrier again to show you guys what it looks like afterwards. The bolt was showing some peening, uh, a lot more than what I would have expected. And I actually talked to Ramsey about this and he reassured me that that is not going to be uncommon. A lot of people may argue with him on that fact, and I can understand why. There's a number of different manufacturers out there, whether it be Wasser or Zestava, 
Wasser, the Cougier Wassers, uh, or like Zostava or some of the other companies out there who may not show that type of peen as quickly as this, but Ramsey reassured me that what degradation that I did see on the bolt should cease moving forward. And what I can tell you is moving from 300 to 685 rounds, I didn't notice a substantial increase in the degradation of that bolt lug. Um, there was painting, but we're going to keep an eye on that moving from 685 to 1000 and see what happens from there. Again, I'm being reassured that we shouldn't see any more than what we've already seen right now, that that bolt and the lugs on that bolt is just wearing into the trunnion. So I leave that to you guys on whether or not that is something that you care about or not. For me, I haven't noticed any significant issues with how the, the, uh, the crank is running. Uh, and I have not seen any type of wear or premature wear on the trunnion as well. I've got some video of the trunnion before, during, and now after, and I'm also have got video of it cleaned up so you guys can see as well that there really isn't uh, any degradation of the trunnion that I can personally see. So again, I, I leave that up to you guys. For me, I have a couple of other bolts from an arsenal, uh, a Zestava M92, uh, a Zestava M70, M90, um, and I'm not seeing as much wear on those lugs as I am with this. So that's that's kind of the thing that I'm concerned about. But if we get into the 1000 round mark, the uh, 1200, the 1500 round mark, and we're not seeing any increase in the peening on that bolt lug, um, then we should be okay. We should be okay. We're going to go ahead and finish running this um, another, what, 315 rounds through it to get to the 1,000 round mark or more. And then once we get to that point, we're gonna do some headspace on this to make sure that we're good to go. In addition to that, we're going to kind of kit this out. I got some stuff on the way from JMAC Customs to put on the back here to uh, kind of pimp this out just a little bit. So I do appreciate everything that uh, JMAC does uh, for this. And I also want to take a second to say a huge thank you to American Cash Exchange. Uh, they were the ones who had this transferred into them. They're a big supporter of the, of the channel, and uh, I really do appreciate all of their support and uh, getting me set up with everything that comes in to the channel. But at the end of the day, I kind of leave it up to you guys. You know how I do things. I talk about the good, with the bad and leave it up to you. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with this. It's been a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, I'm going to continue to shoot it to kind of give you guys updates so we have uh, similar updates to not only what I'm doing, but also what Jacob's doing at AK Quality Enforcement and with Clayco 47 as well. So there you guys have it, the Riley Defense Crink. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section. I would really appreciate it. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. I really do appreciate everybody swinging by and checking out the channel. If you haven't already subscribed and encourage you guys to do so, give me a like, share, comment, all of that type of stuff is a great way to help. Again, if you haven't uh, already checked out the Live Laugh LARP podcast, I encourage you guys to do that as well. And we'll go ahead and get out of here. With that being said, thanks so much. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.